All these Miatas and none of them have a hell crate in it. Where's that guy who put the hell crate in it? That needs to be here. That's only 500 more horsepower than that car needs. Well, hey y'all, welcome back to Doug's Cars. I've got a, a different kind of episode today. I'm headed to Cars and Coffee here in Richmond in the uh, Hoop DM3, which might be leaving with someone else today. It's kind of a bittersweet moment. I uh, bought this car back in February from Tyler Hoover. I'm gonna link to the, uh, the video up here, but uh, it's brought me um, a lot of fun. I, I had an epic 2,000 mile road trip in this in the winter, back from Kansas. Of course, I got to meet Tyler and some of his buddies, uh, watch their go. David the car wizard, and then through this car, met all the guys at sports car workshops in Troy and all those guys. It's been, it's been a fun time, but I've kind of come to the end of my line in this vehicle. So we're taking it to the Cars and Coffee here and uh, hopefully have some people coming to look at it and maybe take it home. I've got the title with me. I also have a special guest, Kyle. He's gonna hey be guys. filming as well. Uh, he's got uh, a separate camera, um, my uh, a little old fee. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see what the Cars and Coffee is like from his perspective. Have you ever, you've never ridden in a convertible before, have you? No. And you've probably never seen a Lamborghini live in the flesh before, have you? Nope. Oh, you're going to today. On YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, yeah, but not in person. So, yeah. So stay tuned. It's going to be a fun time. Well, it's early. The field is still filling up here at the mall. <laughs> probably the most people who've been in a mall parking lot in a long time. But uh, there's a new GT over there. Lambo. Just Kyle taking video of his first Lamborghini sighting of all time, other than on YouTube. And uh, that blue tent over there is where we're hanging out at the sports car workshops tent. They've got their Land Rover Discovery there with the V8 conversion. Guys, this car event is huge. This thing is massive. So many people are here. This is incredibly busy. You can smell all, all the motor oil and all the cars rumbling. There's so many expensive cars. There's the jokester Doug. The Ford GT is a pretty car. I don't care what anybody says. It's pretty. Wow, this is a really nice color. If anybody knows what the name of this color is, let me know in the comments below, please. Everybody loves a happy Fiat 500. They even, they even got, the, uh, got the hatch open so you can see the, or the, the little tiny 500cc engine in the back. <laughs> it's so simple. <laughs> it's so tiny. But it has a cigarette lighter plug, that's good. With a car name like Challenger, it's impossible not to buy it. Yeah, Mustang, 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 those are nice. But here's one of my all-time favorites, an E39 M5, and what a nice color. Ooh, rear club, walnut on the dash. And that amazing sounding V8. Guy in my neighborhood has one of these with the dine in full package. He has the badge on the back. It sounds fantastic. This must be my lucky day. Like a water blue M5. Very cool. Man, that's nice and clean. Nice tint. Two in one day. Very cool. I didn't say that one. No, I was gonna say. It looks a lot like the It's time for some Chick-fil-A, what do you say? Yay! <laughs> well, let's see how bad the line is. We're about to get Chick-fil-A. If this line is long, if this line is long, we'll see you back in another millennia. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that. Oh, it's not bad at all. We'll see you back another millennia later. No, oh, they're making our meal right now. Two thousand years later. Mmm, key lime. Video is not, in fact, not sponsored by Chick Fil A. Shot of wish. Some. I can save that ten bucks if it was sponsored by Chick Fil A. I know. Okay. If, we, if we were sponsored by Chick -fil by Chick Fil A, then this meal would be free. So here's a study in uh, contrast, I, I guess, or this is my car, obviously, and this is not, but this, they're both, like they're both convertibles. Mm. Chick-fil-A? Chicken nugget? Oh, that's a waffle fry. <laughs> but they, see, they're both convertible, so it works that they're they're next to each other, right? Convertible, convertible. And then this absolutely beautiful color, S2000, next to another Rover. 
Oh, but there's one here too. This is the one that they put the V8 in that you've heard on a previous episode of Rover Rescue. Nobody told me that today was Radwood, but I guess it is. I wonder if this one talks like Tyler Hoover's used to before he buried it. Another study in contrast. I love Cars and Coffee for this. You've got this beautiful Mercedes 190 with the folding roof next to this Viper and next to this Alpha Milano that's currently for sale from sports car workshops. And there's the crew. Oh, we have met them all already. Now my personal favorite of the 50s is a 56 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. This is a 53, judging by the tag, but this is so nice. <laughs> Man, that's really neat. Very low. Very cool pearlescent paint. And then the big Dagmar bumpers in the front. That is really cool. Uh oh, everybody look out. There's Mustangs. Who knows what will happen when the Mustangs leave. Everybody watch out. Yeah, this Noble has been around town for quite a while. I've seen this for many years now, but what a neat car. I think these have Ford Mondeo 3.0-liter V6s and then that may or may not be turbocharged. Ah, Chandler brought his uh, Lexus Land Cruiser with his very unique tag, which um, finally went back to the factory wheels. Now, I know he did something with the taillights, I'm not sure what. You uh, Land Cruiser folks can let me know, but these are, I think, from the Asian market ones or something. Oh man, a 2012 Elantra. I didn't know they'd be having these here. That's awesome. This 60s Pontiac Bonneville. Man, the paint is nice on this. Nice red interior. It's always good. But the thing that I always liked about these Pontiacs was the eight lug wheels. The lugs are actually out here on the edges, kind of like a Beetle. And these were optional, but man, they really look cool, and eight lugs, I mean, how can you go wrong with eight lug wheels? Look at that interior. Cameraman filming Speaker. Cameraman. Got nice red Got interior. Got factory air. Uh, and it's interesting, wow, look at that. I'm gonna zoom in here real quick. The, uh, the air conditioner control looks just like the radio. That's pretty cool. Ooh, some lovely Melee's era Dodge Diplomat here. These were usually four-door uh, cop cars and stuff, but this is a two-door coupe. Interesting. With a vinyl top. Ooh, everybody loves an Esprit. Four-cylinder power. Really cool. This has got to be pretty original. Hmm. Very cool. E-type Jags. We've gone from one end to the other of British design. I can't help but see this thing and think, the LAPD have themselves an RV. Gotta love the purple McLaren next to the AMG. I found the Barney Mobile. It's the fancy version of my car. With the scaffolding in the back. It's even the same color. Oh, I don't have one of those though. That adds 75 extra horsepower. Science. When was the last time you saw a lowrider Pontiac full-size wagon from the 60s, uh, other than right now? This is certainly the most unusual Ferrari 412 I've ever seen. Racing seats, stock interior, but um, yeah, that's a, that's gotta be a wrap. That's totally a wrap. This is a 325. I had one of these in college. There was a 318 in maroon tan interior, although this one's got the fancy vinyl interior. Mine was velour, but can't underestimate these. These were fun cars to drive, and they're not too expensive yet, but they are going away, so people need to start saving these. This is the face of the car. It's about to murder you. Looks like the GT's leaving. Hear that V6 roar. Well, here's a relatively straight early Bronco with soft top doors, although someone did cut out the rear end. Pretty uncut dash except for the radio. Bed lined. You can have a lot of fun at this down at the beach. Or just cruising around town on a day that's not 900 degrees out. I love Ford trucks. Things are huge. They build tough. Not sponsored by Ford. This has got to be one of the last Studebakers ever made. It has three A's on it. Triple A, yeah. 
This has got to be, it's a commander. It's got poverty spec wheel covers. Looks like like a regular weave. Big on the, mirror. Yeah, yeah, mirrors were tiny back then. Very, very low basic level car, but what a cool <laughs> car. I mean, I mean, it's got to seriously be one of the last Studebakers ever made. I'm like 66 or something like that. Very cool. Very weird. Very rare. And kind of almost, kind of almost looks like a Mopar, like a Dart or something like that. I can't place why, but that's just the way I feel when I look at it. Well, I just had a nice chat with the owner of that Studebaker. It was actually in the uh, last 11 weeks of production when that was made. It was made in September of 63. It is a 64 model. And it's totally original paint, interior, everything was garage, you know, a little old lady from Pasadena kind of thing. And uh, you know, it, it, it was just amazing, like, poverty spec one. People saved the ones that had the air conditioning from the factory and, and the AM, FM radio and that kind of stuff. And that didn't have any of that. And that somehow survived. And that's cool to see. That's. That's my most interesting and most fun car I've seen today. It's definitely the rarest. I guarantee you there are more of those brand new four GTs that we looked at earlier on the road than there are of those Studebakers left in this in this world. Found this neat little E30 convertible with the M Technic package, which I think is pretty rare, but look at that factory M Technic upholstery. Nobody does anything like that anymore. Nobody takes risks like that. Which is kind of sad because that's kind of cool. I really I, I dig those 80s fabrics that are weird like that, but you probably never see anything like that again because people just are not willing to spend that kind of money on something that's that unusual. Well, things are starting to wind down here as they usually do as we approach 10 a.m. Still waiting on the prospective buyer of my car to show up. Uh, do you enjoy your time here today? Yes. Okay. Cameraman, cameraman 2. Yes, Cameraman 2. Yep. And uh, hopefully the guy shows up soon and I can deliver a positive report. And maybe this car will be leaving and I'll be calling an Uber. Well, the guy said he's here and he's trying to find us. So this might, this could possibly be the last you see of this convertible. Everybody check out this sweet Ford wagon. That'll be like a 58. Country sedan. No wood paneling. Never see one of those anywhere else, except maybe in SoCal. Here's a 56 Ford country sedan. And now for something completely different. A thing. Now, starting to break the tent down. Oh darn. Other cars and coffees coming to an end. Apparently the guy who's buying my car is here on the site somewhere. Hopefully he'll find us now that there's no blue tent to look for. Uh, but it is the only silver M3 convertible here, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. And, well, the guy's here and he's uh, figuring out his payment, but I'm seeing everybody over here at Morgan, so I gotta come see what this is all about. It's like they're having some issues. This is cool. Very cool. Come off of the radiator cap. Oh, I know that oil filter for oil bad. housing. Yep, that's yeah, a Yeah, definitely. Same extent. engine, yeah. success except for the fact that I'm still driving home the M3 and we're not in some kind of Uber or in one of the Land Rovers or something. The guy paid uh, as best as he could. PayPal has a daily limit and he was over the limit so he's coming by tomorrow to pay the rest. I will be sad to see this car go but it was a success today. We saw a great white dog uh, Kyle took a lot of video of that was actually the guy who's purchasing the Hoop DM3 and it's gone. We saw some great cars today. <laughs> that Studebaker was just fantastic and I hope you all enjoyed going along on this trip to Richmond Cars and Coffee. Thanks so much for watching. I do really appreciate each and every person who watches my channel. I would love for you to also follow my channel. I would like to get to a thousand followers by the end of the summer and that's rapidly approaching as we're here almost to August and it's starting to feel like August out here right now. So we gotta hit the road. Once again, thanks for watching and subscribing and liking and commenting and keep watching Doug's Cars. Any final thoughts? Tweet car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thanks y'all.